What's going on guys? Uh, Noah here again with episode 6. On uh, this episode we are going to start uh, prepping and curing our dry rock. And we're going to do this in super fast paced motion. Otherwise you guys are just get bored to tears. Um, very surprised at uh, this dry rock and how much dust. See there's my mask. How much dust it actually kicks off. And I just didn't want to take any chances of inhaling something nasty and get some kind of respiratory infection because I didn't know what I was dealing with. I know you get you get some of these corals that have polytoxins and all that stuff and I, I know everything's dead but yeah big piece of sponge I pulled off. This particular first rock had a lot a lot of sponge on it. Um, so I'm just going through with the wire brush and really cleaning it up trying to pick off as much as um, uh, as much apparent dead stuff as I can find. Um, things that were once living organisms stand out from the the reef itself reef rock you can call it reef rock it's a reef saver rock from bulk reef supply so yeah just going through and trying to get all the nooks and crannies with the screwdriver and the wire brush and I had five pieces total and I ordered 15 pounds and it came out to about 14.98 I got a digital scale so I mean they were almost like dead on perfect but you can just see that pile I'm accumulating. It's kind of sounds funny in, in fast motion when I'm hitting the rock with that wire brush. But I got I got the most of it out. Uh, so a lot of the stuff I was doing off camera too. So I just kind of set it up at a pretty opportune time. So like I say, yeah, five pieces. And just kind of point out a piece of stuff that I'm taking off. Something that was once living is now dead. Found a couple shells in there too, so probably snail shells or crab shells, but I ended up pulling them out and I'm just banging that through. And I was thinking about shaping this rock by means of a saw and drill, but as you'll see in a couple seconds here, um, this rock being as porous and as, as rigid as it is, it actually, I came up with a few simple quick designs that this rock just held together really nice even without epoxy so I'm really confident I can make something really nice in the 55 gallon once I get everything set up see nice, nice and sturdy so then before I actually mix water I'm actually just going to go through and rinse all the rock off get all those fine particulates and and all that uh, residue dust off of everything so it's not floating in the water so the most of the, that dead organic material I can get off um, the, the better then I won't have to you know <laughs> do a water change in a couple of days. I can probably hold off about three, four days before I do my first water change. And I plan on I plan on curing these rocks for about two, three weeks and doing a, a few water changes. So I'm not really worried about the type of water for curing these rocks. I'm just going to use um, treated tap water um, with instant ocean salt. So I bought a five gallon bucket of instant ocean reef crystals and it actually came with a free shirt. It actually fits really nice. Instant ocean shirt. It's also some cool swag that I cool swag that I got as well um, so yeah this is my uh, my unorthodox method of mixing salt water but I've, I, I've been doing it so long with this particular salt mix that it works so well for me even if I use a hydrometer or a refractometer um, I always get the same results and then not shown off camera I do let the water sit and then I'll test it again but uh, I was told for curing dry rock, you want 29 to 30 parts per million or 1.021 to 1.022 should be sufficient enough. So that's what I went with. It's my first time curing dry rock. I mean, I get the basic concept of it. It's pretty simple. So I didn't want to overthink it that much. And I'm just going to be using a tub for this as well. So yeah, about 30 parts per million. So yeah, I'm just using a, a tub, storage tub that I've rinsed and cleaned out and I believe I fit about 15 gallons in there. So I was told to do a 50% water change uh, the first two times, and then on my last water change, just do a 25%. So first two water changes gonna be about seven and a half gallons, so I'm not gonna really get it perfect, but I'm just going through and dumping the water in now. So for this, I'm gonna add a power head just for some circulation and some oxygen exchange on the surface. And I'm, all, and I'm also using a, a fluval pump and running an airline to an air stone as well just for some oxygen transfer and just to really get things moving in this tub and i have a little blooper as well that i'm gonna 
I'm gonna add to this video at the end. That was kind of funny. <laughs> I dropped my camera. Uh, so I just bought a, um, a 50 watt um, non preset heater from Fluval. Uh, so I said, it, I said it's about 78 degrees. And the scene is I'm keeping it in the basement where it's it's a little cooler. It'll, it should have no problem regulating its temperature. So it's not like it's gonna, the water's gonna be getting too hot or anything. Yeah, so I'm gonna plug it in, plug it back in, and everything seems to run great. So I'm gonna come back to this, um, this curing in about three days. I'm just gonna test the levels. I mean, I know I'm gonna have just hell of ammonia and, and nit hopefully nitrate, that'd be great. Uh, put a little chemical additive in there to, to help that curing and cycle process just a little bit. Um, so yeah, I think uh, for next video guys, we're probably just gonna work on some other odds and ends uh, on the project. I haven't quite decided what I'm gonna do yet. Um, so just definitely stay tuned for now. I think I'm just gonna probably mess around under the sump area just a little bit more. So yeah, just getting the top on there. I'm just gonna let that sit for a while now. Let's <laughs> check in to make sure I'm still getting air. <laughs> So yeah guys, until I find um, something else to record, uh, probably give me a couple days, I'll upload my next video. But until then, thanks for watching guys, I appreciate it. The series is coming along really good so far. See you next time. Alright, what's going on you guys? So you just saw me do the, the live rock curing process. So I'm going to let that sit for a couple weeks. I'm going to make a couple changes on here. You can see those funky colors running in the background. Um, well, I remembered that if I were to put that my old LED light bar up top, my protein skimmer isn't going to fit. So I'm actually going to mount that to the side, kind of where it is right now. It gives me adequate light. And then I bought another LED bar. And this thing's cool because it has full RGB control, so I can go from, and the sensor is mounted right there. You probably can't see it. Right there. That's so I can change from, like, pink. Gotta get to stop flashing. Oh, got the wrong way. Okay, so, like, red, green. You got blue. And I can go through all the ones that I want. You can make it strobe or flash. So you got flash, strobe. Oh, it's, it's hard to read here. You got a fade. And then you got the smooth, which I think the smooth is what I'll use. But I just think once I actually get this thing up and going, it's going to look really cool against the wall. Light's probably going to be really intense. See, I'm looking on the camera and it's making it look like it's changing a million colors, but it's actually a smooth transition. So yeah, this, this camera is doing like funky things to it. Or I can just change it to plain white. Oh, sensor's right here. So I got just white if I wanted to. And then I can adjust the intensity of it. Turn it all the way down or brighten it up. Or I can just turn it <clears throat> off and on completely. All from the comfort of sitting on my couch or whatever. And then for <clears throat> the naysayers, on my pump or my sump return line level, it's perfect. It hasn't moved at all. Running that extra that extra power head pump over into the second chamber. So yeah. Again, thanks for watching guys.